Welcome back, all my sweet circlers. How the hell are you? It's just me. Nobody else is here but me. Definitely do not have a special guest on the podcast today. Psych! Cody, that was so loud in their ears. The circlers are snuggled up somewhere so cozy or they're driving or they're on a circular strut and they do not need to be startled like that. But my husband, Cody, has joined us today because we are on vacation. We are in Palm Desert. It's my favorite place in the world and now like our favorite place in the world. And I had to record an episode and I thought, you know what? It's Easter Sunday and that's a day for family. So I asked Cody if he wanted to be on. Yes. And I said yes. But I don't have a mic. So if you're watching on video... Cody and I are just sitting in on this bed. I'm in straight up in my pajamas and we're sharing, sharing, sharing the mic. mic. I'm having a little bit of a hard time because I have bare feet right now and I don't want to show the dogs for free because this is a horrible yeah. dog angle. Well, you got a nice angle on our dog, actually. Chili's here as well. But for me personally, my personal dogs, yeah. like people are going to be looking at this bottom of my, like the soles of my feet. Do you want socks? Do you like to take the mic when I'm... Whose podcast is this? <laughs> I could take the mic literally whenever I want because this is Circle Time with Kelsey Kreppel. That was mid-sentence, though. I didn't even get to finish the thought about... <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> this is going to be really hard for Cody and I to do this with one microphone because both of us like want to talk over the other one all the time. Well, we could be an interview though. Well, then let me interview. Like it could be. You. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you. So, my husband Cody is on with us today and Cody, we have a lot to talk about because first of all, last episode I was telling the circlers about how we were going to New York to Las Vegas. And you had a lot of very exciting firsts last weekend. So I wanted to talk to you about them. Okay. So the first, the first first that you had was when we lost our virginities to each other okay. last weekend. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's a joke. That was a joke. I thought he, I thought he was going to laugh, but he didn't. He <laughs> yawned and then said, okay. So I guess that joke didn't land too well, but that's okay. But actually one of your first was your first Bruce Springsteen concert. Yes. And Cody, how did you feel? Okay, so let's take it take us through this. So I have been as I told you guys last time, I've this this I've been to five Bruce Springsteen concerts, now six. So I knew what to expect. I know the songs, I know the music. So like I am the correct audience for, you know, a Bruce Springsteen concert because I know how much I love Bruce. Cody was going in kind of with like a blind eye and he has listened to a couple Bruce songs, but you know, didn't know too much. And Cody, I want to hear what you thought about the Bruce Springsteen concert. Well, Bruce isn't like, he's not my favorite like form of music, like genre wise. Like I've never really like you, I get, well, I get why people enjoy him and you play it and it's great music. And he's very, obviously he's one of the most talented people on the planet, of course. So I can appreciate that. But in terms of music, it's not like I'm in my car and I'll put on a Bruce Springsteen playlist. So like going into it, I was, I knew he's a good performer, which is what we're there to see. I don't know. I, I don't like, I'm not looking to turn up to, um, I don't even know the name. Born in the USA is the only one I know. So that was my that was my impression going in. It's just like you know, not not it was just like not really any impression. Which is like looking to you know see a good show, and uh, so like not even knowing any of the songs, I still enjoyed the heck out of it. Just nonstop back to back. He just was going and like just like the best part of it is like a real. It was a real fucking concert. You know, it's like two, how how big is the E Street Band? Twelve people, something like that every fucking instrument you could ever want yeah. up there. Yeah. You know, there's a guy playing the xylophone probably. Didn't they have a xylophone guy? No. Oh, I mean, they were playing that. Oh, they yeah, had it was a, right on the teeth, had, right on the teeth. They had an organ player. Yeah. Someone was playing like the, like the washboard, you know? No. Nobody was playing the washboard. Oh, they had a Vuvuzela guy for sure. Well, uh, what's a Vuvuzela? What? 
The like South African horn? I never heard of one of those. Well, there was a guy up there that like yeah. Can you be serious? Yeah, I will be. No, no, but they it was they were so well rehearsed too. They just they've been playing together for decades, so they all know each other inside and out. That sounds wrong, but they've probably all fucked too. Is am I allowed to say that on this? You can say that, but I don't like that. It's like a Nardwar interview. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so what was I saying? Yeah, so you can tell just via the amount of orgies they've had how well they know each other. And no, it really was. They're so like in sync. I just love when like you just see like seasoned professionals. Like they just know what the fuck they're doing. It's easy for them and they're having fun. And they're all just, all 12 of them are just rocking the fuck out. And everybody Everybody that's there is having like the time of their lives. Like they put on the lights like like they he played for like three and a half hours. First of all, he's 73 years old. He absolutely crushed it. And then they put on like the lights in the arena so you could see everyone around you. And everyone is just like dancing and having like the fucking time of their lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I will say like there was. You know, every single age group was there having fun, but I've never seen like boomers specifically get that like lit. Yeah. The boomers, boomers for Bruce is what they're called. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I just made that up. But I mean, like boomers it's, for Bruce. yeah, but like, it's not, I, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, at, like we went with my mom, my dad, my brother and us and each one of us actually had a good time, yeah. you know? He's for everyone. He's for all ages. He really is. But like when the lights went on, we were looking around and they're like, you know, there's like old people like just turning the fuck up. Yeah, that's true. And you know who else was there? Paul McCartney was there. We saw Paul McCartney. We saw Ben Stiller. We saw Adam Scott. And it was just an absolute blast. Like we really did. We had just a great time and I was so happy to share that with Cody because I've been so excited for him to experience this for a long time. It must be annoying to be Paul McCartney because they turned the lights on and I think more people in the stadium were looking at him. Well, that's, I was thinking like, guys, like, look at Bruce. Like he's literally putting on the show of his fucking life right now and you guys are all staring at Paul McCartney. And Paul McCartney's just standing there like this and everyone's like, people are like, oh, he circle burped. Sorry, yeah. Is that what happens on here? You got the circle burps. Yeah. He like the kid in front of us was just kept filming and then like zooming in on Bruce and then turning and zooming in on Paul McCartney and then zooming in on Bruce. I was like, I think he got the shot, dude. He did that like sixteen times. No, the kid in front of us. I'm sorry, I have such beef with that kid. Why? Like he would not stop filming. <laughs> like he was his Snapchat story must have been like two, like three and a half hours. Like he literally was on Snapchat recording the entire thing. And it's like, so he's standing directly in front of me. He's already like six foot. And then he's holding his phone up Snapchat. It, and it's like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna film the whole show, don't use Snapchat. It's like a slap in my face. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. I, I've never understood. And I still Same. continue. I try like I, I'll do, I'll film a couple shots, but one or two, and it's, you got it. You get one or two 10, 10 second segments, and then you have, you can reflect on those, and it doesn't change, like this, sh you, you won't get a better shot. You know, I think people, whoa. Chili wants to be on Chili. But it, it's, what is it for? What are they gonna like, I don't know, I, how crude can I be on here? Is, you can say what you want. No, uh, don't say jerk off. Okay. Okay, sorry. Are they going to pound off to it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I think there have been times like where I've filmed certain things at a show because like, I'm like, holy shit, I've waited so long for this moment. I want to remember it forever. The thing is though, like I've never once looked at one of those videos again and I remember it almost better if I'm actually just like experiencing it. Like I've realized now that like the moments I want to remember, I really try to like, just stand there and like take it all in instead of like trying to get like the shot and the lighting because then the whole time you're fucking focusing on this video the part that you want to see is over because you're moving around you're shaking you're readjusting the lighting and then all of a sudden 
the part that you've been looking forward to seeing live for forever is literally over. So, like, what the fuck? Yeah, which is fine to do one time. Yeah. Two times. Oh. It's like the 15th time. It's like, dude, this isn't going to be a better video than the last four times. I know you're like, oh, wait, this song, I got to get this one. It's like, just, just watch it. That's what I'm saying. That's literally- That's what I'm saying. No, but also that's what... Oh, where's your mic then? If you're saying it. This is my podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I just... I totally agree. Filming... I don't mind... F- and then, like, I did wish, like, I had a couple more videos. Like, I think I went too hard on the, like, we didn't we didn't have technology once. We don't need to know. Like, I went a little bit too hard on that. <laughs> Wait, what? What was that? <laughs> like, I was, like, too much, like, we don't need technology. We d- my parents never videotape shows. You know what I mean? Like, I went too hard on that that side of the spectrum so like i didn't film anything and then like i'm like looking at trying to look at videos and i'm like i didn't take a single fucking video so i kind of go back and forth you know i have let's see i have one two three and i I do a a quick i do a quick circle i do a quick quick pan quick pan just to get a sense of the audience right Right. so you get establish you know the, the setting right Right? So that's what that one's for. I had another one when the lights turned on because that was a, that was a, you know, like a discernible, like, next, like, chapter of the show when the lights went on. Pop off discernible. Yeah. So I had to, had to get some evidence of that happening. And then, and then I have a one video when he came up on that little middle stage. Yeah. Okay. So get this, you guys. So we, we had really, really good seats and Cody got these. Oh, can you let Chili up? Cody got us these tickets for my birthday, I told you, and he got me, my mom, my dad, my brother, and himself all tickets to go see Bruce, which is like the best gift in the world for my whole family. He's, if you're watching on video, he is showing you a picture. I can just insert it into the video. But so we were sitting on the floor and there was like this middle stage. And at one point, Bruce himself came and walked on the stage the middle stage right in front of us it was crazy i was waving to him i have this thing where like if somebody's on stage i am trying my absolute darndest to get them to wave to me like i have always wanted to be waved to from the from the the stage and I, so i was going pretty ham when bruce walked on that little middle thing because like we made eye contact you know i'm like there's no way he didn't see me yeah he knows you were there for sure Bruce, I was there. He's like in the green room afterwards, like, I wish I got a video of that brunette. I thought you were going to say like beautiful or something. Beautiful, blue-eyed brunette. Okay. Burnette. Burnette. <laughs> <laughs> that brunette. That beautiful brunette. That brunette. Sorry, guys. Okay. I really hope I am not alone in this, but I... I'm so guilty of like feeling a little bit something off with my body. Like even for example, okay, I had period cramps the other day, just like cramps, regular old cramps. And instead of just being like, oh, these are cramps. Instead, I went down a TikTok rabbit hole of what the pain could possibly mean. And I just end up getting like questionable advice from so-called experts. And then I start to spiral thinking something is seriously wrong when I'm not actually even talking to anyone who could really help like a real doctor perhaps. Um, And there are just better ways to get the answers you want and the care you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet, which I need to work on and I have worked on ever since I've started using ZocDoc. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care you need and deliver the type of experience you want. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. I've always been so nervous about going to the doctor since I've been a little kid. It's just always freaked me out. And I've always, as I got older, as I became an adult and had to find myself a doctor, I was really worried about finding a doctor I actually like and trust. But thanks to ZocDoc, I was actually able to do that. And it was a lot less scary and a lot easier to do than I thought it would be. So no more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for someone and just getting questionable reviews. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor you just haven't met yet. 
Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. Coming from someone who, before finding ZocDoc, found going to the doctor, finding a doctor, like I said, very stressful and not fun at all, ZocDoc is just so helpful and so amazing. I couldn't recommend it more. You have to try. Go to ZocDoc.com slash circle time and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash circle time. ZocDoc.com slash circle time. Okay. It's time that I get to talk about one of my favorite three-letter words again. It's a three-letter word. It has an X in it. The last letter is X. What do we think it is? Let's say it at the same time. One, two, three. Tux. Yes. And when you need a tux, the best place to go get one is the black tux. Now, ever since Cody and I got married and really just like like when all of our friends kind of started to get married and we just have had to go to more fancy events. I feel like I just know so much more about tuxes and how they fit and what is a good quality tux and all of that. And the black tux makes it super easy to get an on-trend, top quality, guaranteed to fit tux without ever leaving your house, which is just music to my ears. Also, this is not just for my circlers who are wearing the tuxes, but my circlers who have a partner who would wear a tux because the black tux really makes everyone's lives easier. I know when I had to go with Cody, I really just had no idea where to even begin. And this has helped so much. Here's how it works. You just take the black tux fit quiz. You pick the style you want to rock and boom, your tux is delivered to your door 10 days before the day you need it. That is plenty of time to try it on and make sure it fits and it looks great, which I guarantee it will. And hey, if the fit's not quite right, say hello to the black tux fit guarantee, which is You order a better size within a day or two of receiving the less than great fitting one and they'll send another right away at no extra cost. So easy. And if you prefer an in-store experience, the Black Tux has showrooms across the country. Their expert fit stylists will help you find the perfect style tux or suit and make sure it fits just right. There have been so many friends' weddings, events that we've been to and instead of like scrambling with Cody to find the right tux, Now, we don't have to do that anymore, thanks to the Black Tux. Rent or buy, the Black Tux is the best place to go when you need a tuxedo for a wedding or a special night. And right now, when you go to theblacktux.com slash KelseyK and use code KelseyK, you'll save $20 off your order. That's T-H-E-B-L-A-C-K-T-U-X dot com slash KelseyK, code KelseyK to save $20. Theblacktux.com slash KelseyK, code KelseyK. Okay, so we went to Bruce. Had a, isn't, isn't Burnett's like a vodka? Yeah, it's like what the it's like. One? Yeah, it's like the cheap vodka, right? That you guys drink in college. It's kind of a cute name, Burnett. Oh my god, should we name our kid Burnett? <laughs> yes. That would be <laughs> that would be insane, Burnett College Essex. Yeah, that was the vodka we were drinking the night we conceived you, Burnett. <laughs> like uh, two thirty-year-olds drinking Burnett's, making a baby. Right from the plastic handle. <laughs> and like, I could see us being like, this is the best night of our lives. And we're going to name this baby Burnett. Yes. <laughs> I keep just saying things and then holding the mic to Cody's mouth just for him to respond. And he doesn't have a response. I think you have to ask a question if you're going to do that. Do you love me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So that was the Bruce Cons. Bruce Cons. Bruce Cons. And then we hopped on a plane at LAX. Sorry, I, I did that so many times last episode too, just because I couldn't stop saying hopped on a plane. But anyway, we hopped on this damn plane, took our jet straight from New York City to the city of devils, Las Vegas. And Cody Collegesic, my husband, DJed. At Encore Beach Club. Yes. <laughs> God damn it. Why did I ask you to be on this app? What's funny? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm happy you're here. Now I'm worried about my dogs. This is just like old times. Don't you remember like the footage of us podcasting on the bed at Market Street? I'm in the purple yeah. sweater. This is like the third episode we ever did together was exactly like this. I know. I know. But I, we both had mics. We did both have mics. And and I thought Cody was bringing a mic, 
and he thought I was bringing a mic, even though I only have one mic. But we just got our wires crossed. I had a bunch of mics in my studio, and they got removed. So I thought that there was a there was a yeah there was a crossing of wires. Let's say, <laughs> or lack thereof, because <laughs> there's no mic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Cody performed at Encore Beach Club. And Cody, can you walk us through how you felt as a DJ at Encore Beach Club? Yes. Well, I, let me tell you this. I was pretty nervous because, you know, I've told this story before, okay? But so I know I did that video where I was like learning how to DJ or whatever. I had DJed in college for three years, right? But like, these were back on when you had like beat match manually and stuff. No, that now. wasn't a high five. I had a question. Oh, <laughs> yes. Can you tell the circle is your DJ name? No, 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 I'm not going to. Never, never going to. I'm sorry, circlers. I tried. But so, like, I bought a I bought a set of a CDJs when I was a sophomore in college because I was like, this would be a really it's a cool job to have and it's an easy way to like make money and still party at the same time. And that's exactly what it was. I Tom. He's very efficient. Yeah, and I, I was like, you know, I was kind of on the bleeding edge of the EDM scene in North Carolina because, like, it was like everyone was listening to the top forty in country music, and I would go home for Christmas and like in Calgary it was like dubstep and all this crazy EDM people were getting into. So then I was exposed to that, and I was I knew I so I had really good songs, and so I bought a set of CDJs, taught myself how to use them, taught myself how to B-match, and then would get hired to do frat parties. And it worked out pretty well. I was never really that good. Like, no one was ever, like, itching to see me or anything like that. But there is this one story of... Did you have groupies? No, not really. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you did have, like, a couple. Like, no. Like, Girls, I'm playing tonight at 85. <laughs> was that a frat? <laughs> yeah, that was a frat, but... Hey, yeah, girls... DJ tonight at 85. Yo, good to see you. I'm pu- I'm playing tonight. My set's at 1 a.m. You're like, we know. We have a- oh, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> see you there. I see you at every single one. No, it wasn't like that, unfortunately. Sad. I would have been your groupie. Thanks. Okay, so there was this one story. I got hired to... I've told you this before, I think. But I got hired to play... This is... this is. I think it was on last day of classes. L-Doc, as it's known. L-Doc? God, you guys make everything fun. I mean, we had Eldoc was pretty cool. Like, like they always booked like really good performers. Like Macklemore came one year, which is <laughs> cool. At that time, it was like you guys. I love Macklemore. I don't talk about it a lot, but I am like I am Mackle Stan. I am Mrs. Mackle. I am I am Mackley Dude a lot. <laughs> Mackley Dude all day. That's what his stands are called. Mrs. Mackle. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're called, called Mackley Dude all days. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is why I don't have Cody on because I started saying shit like Mackley Dude all day. I would have never said that if it was just me and the circlers, but I am Mackley Dude all day. So I guess I was a Mackley Dude all day back in the <laughs> back in the day because this was like when his first song started popping off, which was Pretty the sure. No, no, before that, the one and, we, and danced. we danced and we cried and we laughed and had a really 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 good time take my hand let's have a blast i remember this moment for the rest of our lives our lives our lives okay i don't want to sing too much for you guys i don't want you to turn off the podcast so we'll keep going cody so he's saying and we danced and by the way i i do i do respect macklemore i think he is a talented guy, but this is like, you know, he kind of like started to become known as like a corny rapper, you know. You're not going to do that here on. I'm just saying this was like, bef- this was like that first song was coming up and he was like the coolest. It was like, holy fuck, this song is so different from anything I've ever heard. This yeah. guy's the coolest dude in the world. I get it, I get it, I get it. And so he performed and it was so sick. And then we had like, who else? Cray Sean came to my school. That's sick. Gucci, Gucci, Louie, Louie, Fendi, Fendi, Prada. Yeah. I love that song. Okay, so anyways, I got hired to, I think it was on L Doc. There was this bar on campus called Shooters. It's still there. It's the it's the one where everyone goes. Yeah. It's like the kick ass shitty college bar that everyone goes. Everyone, it's like known for people just getting blacked out, and there's a cage that people can dance in, oh. and there's a huge, a big ass dance floor, and there's a, always this old guy DJing, and he's just like, 
you know, he's got like a catalog of top 40 songs and that's all he plays and that's yeah. all you need there. It's Jeff what everyone wants. His name is Jeff Shooters. Yes, that's Mr. Shooters. Yeah. yeah. And his wife is Mrs. Shooters. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. So I get hired to play. I was the first DJ ever to get hired there besides this old guy. They were like, okay, let's let's take a chance on a student DJ. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, I'm going to... I'm going to bring EDM to shooters. It's people are going to love it. It's going to work for sure. That's huge. And I was the, I think I was, it's the first time that the, the shooters dance floor was ever cleared. I remember just watching people just filter out and I was like, Oh my God, I like the, I fa It was like the equivalent of like bombing as a comedian. It was like, I fucking failed. I cleared the dance floor at a place that's primarily for dancing and like people there were like very drunk yeah i mean it's i think it's just one of those things where like every single other time they went to shooters it was top 40 so they're going expecting that and then this handsome dj gets off the stage jeff and then a college guy (laughs) comes in (laughs) That was good. Thank you. No, but then you come and you start playing all this EDM and, <laughs> and they're confused. They don't know how to dance. <laughs> they want to hear like, I mean, everyone's like, like I think Ray Sremmerd was like 80% of the music played at Shooters at that time, which is Somebody awesome. Somebody come get her. That yeah. song played every single time I was there. Somebody come get her. See, and then all of a sudden it's, Ew. you guys like dubstep? <laughs> Here's Rusko. Remember him? Yes, I would have fallen in love with you because I loved dubstep. I'm a dubstep girl. Yeah, you are. You love rhythm and dubstep. Yeah. I'm a And I'm just stank, stank face. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I also love Ray Shremmerd and rap and top 40. So it would have been tough. It would have been tough for me too. I get it. But I'm sure you crushed it. Anyway, we- I wanted you to talk about Vegas. So basically, I tell that story as a as a preface because that is always kind of burned into my brain now as as in like, oh, when you have this feeling of like, oh, I, I have good music. I know people are going to like this. It's good music. There's always a chance that they're not going to like it. And there's always a chance you're going to like read the vibe wrong. And I think that's what good DJs obviously do well is they're like prepared enough so that if it is not going well and they're like, oh, well, it's a weird, it's a Sunday. It was a Sunday. So it's like, maybe it's not as turned up. Maybe people want to hear rap instead that you can like switch over and everything. And I just like didn't have any other music besides like what I prepared. So I was like, it's, you know, this either goes well or it doesn't. But I was there a couple weekends before and kind of read the vibe. And so I was like feeling confident, like, oh, this is probably going to work. And it did. If anything, my music like wasn't lit enough. And I'm saying lit, I'm using lit a lot because it's like, it's the only word I have to describe like the hype, you know, it's yeah. like you have certain, like you can like, House music like spans, there's a wide range of like hypeness, you know? Like at the end of it is like super turned up Vegas music where you hear like at nighttime in the clubs where it's just like, wah, 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 right? Yeah, totally. And then on the other half is like really like, you know, minimal like techno. That makes sense. And, you know, coming from someone, I would say that like a genre that I haven't completely connected with is EDM. There are some times where I'm like, okay, this is the same same thing like over and over again. And like, as long as there's words, I'm usually fine. Anyway, Cody's set was so, so good. Like I had so much fun dancing to your music the whole time. And I just think that like you absolutely crushed it. And I was such a proud DJ wife. Thanks. Thank you. I mean it. I really like you really did crush it. And it was like so cool. All of All of our best friends came in and a lot of those are like the same guys that have been going to Vegas with Cody since they were like fresh out of college and like had to wait in line and pay like $200 just to get into the club. And now Cody was DJing. And so like they were all just like so genuinely excited for him. And like just to see that and like see where he is now. And like it it was really, really a special day and it was so fun and it was just the best. So I'm happy that I got to be there for it because you almost were going to do it a couple weeks prior and I was going to be in San Diego with the girls. And I'm really, really happy that I got to be there for it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. I'm happy. I, like all the girls were there too. Yeah. We were really excited. The girlies, the girls bring good vibes. 
What don't you get about that? I don't not get it. I know. He do. He he do. He do. He gets it. Okay, if any of you know even just one thing about me, it's who my dog is. My dog, Chili. Because I am obsessed with him. And I talk about him all the time. And I love him so much. And I have basically made it my sole purpose in life to make sure that Chili is as healthy and happy as he possibly can be. And a huge focus of that is what we feed him. Now, we know that if we ate a processed meal for every meal, it wouldn't be healthy. And kibble is subject to multiple rounds of high heat processing, making it an ultra processed food. So would we want to feed our dogs that? No. Dogs should try something fresh too. And that is where the farmer's dog comes in. Now, we have been feeding Chili, the farmer's dog, since he was just a little puppy. And he is truly so obsessed with it. And I am just so happy we found it. I, I cannot recommend it more. I absolutely love it. And when we first got him, we tried feeding him kibble and he just like did not care about it. He wanted nothing to do with it. He wouldn't eat. We couldn't get him to eat. And then the second we switched to farmer's dog, he just instantly gets so excited to eat every single time, scarfs it right down. Plus it's way healthier for him. It's real fresh, healthy food with whole meat and veggies gently cooked in human grade kitchens to preserve its nutritional value. It's so easy Okay, all you have to do is go online and tell them about your dog and they'll deliver personalized vet developed recipes for as little as $2 a day and meals arrive in pre-portioned, ready to serve packs conveniently delivered on your schedule. It is so convenient and fresh. Dog people all across the country have ordered millions of meals from the farmer's dog. I cannot tell you guys how much I recommend it. Chili's hair is always soft. His teeth are always white. He's healthy. He's happy. I just love it so much. It's never been easier to invest in your dog's health with fresh food. I know how important pets are and how important our animals are to us, and I would never recommend anything for them that I didn't know for a fact was great. You have to try Farmer's Dog. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash circle. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash circle to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash circle. Go to thefarmersdog.com slash circle to get 50% off your first box plus free shipping. You'll love it and so will your pets. All right, this is for all you single circlers out there. And I mean any single circler, not just the ones who are looking for something serious, but whatever it is that you want to find, no matter what it is, anything's possible. What if I said it starts with a swipe? Because so many possibilities really are just a match away, everyone. Tinder is the world's most popular dating app. And that means there are the most opportunities there to find whatever it is you're looking for. Success on Tinder can really mean whatever you want it to, okay? You know, other dating apps, they're hard and they're more serious. And you don't know if someone wants the same exact thing as you. But Tinder really does make it easy and fun and also straightforward. Okay, so you can say what you're looking for and you can make sure that the people you're talking to are in the exact same boat as you, which I just think is so helpful and just weeds so many people out. Tinder just released relationship goals, which is a new status for your profile that shows others what types of connections you are looking for. And like I said, I just I know so many people on dating apps and a lot of times you think someone wants the same thing as you and it turns out after you've already met them and hung out with them that they don't. But with this, it's so easy because you know you're getting exactly what you want. Relationship goals is just one of many features that Tinder has released to make sure you're comfy on the app, which is so necessary. And they have more safety features than any other dating app. So I really recommend you try it out and you get exactly what you're looking for. On Tinder, it starts with a swipe. Download Tinder today and explore all of the possibilities for yourself. Good luck out there, circlers. So yeah, it was all around just like a great weekend. And I'm really actually happy to have you on this episode so that we could rehash it together because I feel like it was one of those weekends that we were like, damn, we're really kind of going for it. Like we did a lot in one weekend and it was awesome. And I think that I was just happy to be doing it all with you. Same. It was a lot of fun. It was great. And now we're in the desert. So, and with, which is, you know, where we got married. And this is our first time back in the desert since we got married. We're about five miles away from where we tied the old knot. And it's just nice to be back. And now we get to have a week here and enjoy it. And it's Easter. Do you have any questions about Easter? Well, first of all, I didn't know. 
until yesterday, like when when it was. I was like, when is Easter? We learned that it's not the same. Well, I knew this, but it's not the same. There's no like on Thanksgiving, it's the last Thursday of every November. But Easter just kind of goes with the liturgical calendar, as my mother was telling us. But who picks it? Jesus. I don't know who picks it. The ca- the church? The, the Pope, maybe? Who's throwing that shit on the cow? Who, the, like, who? the church. But I, I never get an invite. It's just on there, you know? Yeah, it's a U2. Exactly, preloaded. Yeah. Which- preloaded onto my G-Cow, which is a little bit invasive. True, but like, I get the, the Catholics got to do what they got to do to get, their, get the word out there. U2 did not need to do that. I think the word is out there about Catholicism. I think people know about it. It's not awareness about Catholicism. It's awareness about when Easter is. Yeah. So there's a there's a system. I don't know what it is, but apparently Easter moves, you know, over the course of many years from the end of March to the end of April and then back. It like just cruises up and down the cow. So that's why it's always kind of thrown off. It's like, what? Fucking someone on Friday was like, it's a good Friday. I'm like, what? Really? I know. It's crazy. But it is what it is. <sighs> OK, let's get into it. I know we have something very important that we need to talk about. And. I know Cody has a lot of thoughts and feelings on this, so I'm happy that you're here. But do you think that Taylor and Joe broke up? Uh, I I had done a lot of research, went down the rabbit hole on this one, and I do think they did. Why? Because I saw one picture of her kind of looking at him, sort of like, and that made me think. I think it was a pop crave or something like that. She was looking at him funny? Yeah. It might not have even been him. It's because he's poor. Swifties will get it. Oh. <laughs> There's like this ongoing joke about like Taylor Swift always like talking in songs about how he's poor. <laughs> like it's like she like makes fun of him for being poor. Like she like like the song Paper Rings. She's like, I don't need a diamond. Like I'm good with paper rings. Or like there's one that's like, oh my God, there's so there's like there's a few that I know. They're really funny. That's good because like that's going to be a thing no matter who she dates. Every guy is going to seem poor compared to her. Yeah, that's that's true. But okay, do, I, I I I I feel pretty like torn about them potentially breaking up, and I don't want to like I don't want to talk about it too much because one, like I don't even know if it's true, even though it seems like it is, and two, I just feel like it would be unfair to her as a fan to now just focus on this breakup and not the like insane three and a half hour world tour that she's doing and like everything that she's put into like her career and her music and all of that. So I feel like I don't want to like like she doesn't she doesn't want the focus to be her breakup. I just know that. You know, so I don't want to do too go too hard on that. For her sake? Yeah. Yes, because I'm a good fucking fan. Okay, all of you guys, you don't even know what it's like to be a good fan of Taylor Swift. Okay, I kind of got into that last time. Oh, fan beef. (laughs) (laughs) That's what makes a good fan is beefing with other fans. For sure. I'm not beefing. I'm just trying to I'm trying to lead by example. For Taylor's fans. I've been a fan of her long enough to where I know what she likes. <laughs> You're a better fan than the other fans. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, my God. Is that what it sounds like I'm saying in the last episode, too? I'm not saying I'm a better fan. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. It's just like, yeah, maybe her and her boyfriend broke up, but she probably she probably doesn't want that to be the main focus after all of the hard work that she's put into this tour. Well, then don't break up with your fucking boyfriend in the middle of the tour. You don't know if she broke up with him he's poor of course she did <laughs> she's like i can't fucking do this anymore joe okay i don't uh, my f- fingers can only fit so many fucking paper rings okay <laughs> look at these all 10 <laughs> i wasn't serious when i was talking about the paper rings thing joe it was cute the first time it's not cute anymore <laughs> stop making macaroni rings you know i just the thing i don't know why i picture like a macaroni like Joe comes in, he's like, I made you another gift and it's a macaroni British. painting. What? British. Oh, I made you another gift, love. Yeah, love, I made you another bloody gift. There's- Joe, it's an, oh, another macaroni painting. Thank you so much. I'm putting this one on the fridge next to the, the 10 other ones. Thank you. And I even had some paper left over, love, so I made you a ring. 
I knew you would like the poor thing. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it's like it's a it's one of my favorite fan theories for sure. It does make me a little bit sad because I mean, I don't we don't know for sure, but I'm pretty positive that like all of my favorite like love songs that she's written are about him and is daylight. Yeah. And like so it like breaks my heart a little bit because No. <laughs> I know. It's just like I don't know if she found her daylight and then she's gone. Like what? Is she okay? Nighttime, 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 nighttime. Stop. I don't want her to have to find her nighttime again. I don't know. Either way, I just, I hope she's okay. And it just is like kind of sad because like she literally can never walk Cornelia street again. I'm just kidding. What if I started crying? No, but like, it's sad. Are they married? Are they married? Well, there was some speculation that maybe they are, but now everybody's thinking they're not because no one actually fucking knows anything. We all just like guess all of these things. So this could just be entirely not true, too. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't actually know for sure. What's the evidence? Couldn't tell you. There's no evidence. People just just someone tweeted it one time and everyone's like, oh, fuck. It's the same thing with like Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet. Remember how I was saying, like, how does anyone know that they're dating? Like, it was just out there one day, and then everybody's reporting it. But, like, where is the, like, proof? Oh, it's like somebody told, like, it's like a, what are they, a rumor. Or, like, as a, they call that. an exclusive, like, they go to, like, people with an exclusive. Or, like, I don't know, another news source. I don't know if it's true, but I don't want it to be true. I have gotten a few DMs that are like, are you okay? <laughs> Neither. I don't think they work together at all. I don't think Timothy and Kendall work together in the slightest. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about Taylor and Joe. Oh. And it's Kylie and Timothy. Oh. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? No, I know. It's like, so. like, it's, we'll get to that in a second. But like, I don't want Taylor and Joe to have broken up. I mean, then again, we know the songs, but we don't actually know what their relationship was like. So maybe it wasn't that healthy of a relationship and it's a, it, they've drifted apart and it's okay that they I don't want to be together. It's a bummer, but I don't know. I just hope everybody's okay. You know? Yes. Thank you. Now, Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet. Well, what do you think? I mean, I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. Why? Because it doesn't even it doesn't even work in my mind. Yeah. Listen, I mean, it. Wh- I don't. It doesn't work in my mind either. I don't know. I like. I want to see them like standing next to each other. For some reason, he like he like in my mind he smells. He's got like bad breath. One hundred percent. He's Mister Stinky. Yeah. Uh, you know what? He's also. Like he's like the he's like the guy that like is like I've been wearing natural deodorant, you know it's healthier for it's like dude you stink. Yeah, actually I've been wearing natural deodorant. Well, no, I'm kidding. You smell great, but <laughs> I mean I'm sure you know. Also, men tend to smell more pungent than women. No, the thing with Timothy Chalamet is that he doesn't shower. Yeah, that's what. I- like it's not he's not like wearing natural deodorant. Like he's like he doesn't believe in like showers and deodorant. <laughs> you know, like it goes against like his craft. <laughs> right. <clears throat> like. He only picks he only picks roles where he he like gets dirty and then he says he's a method actor and then he doesn't shower. And also he's method acting is a stinker. Yeah, he's method acting as a big stinky baby and I don't love him. And I and I don't get I don't get what the hype is about. Where I feel like Kylie is very like manicured, very um like, you know, tailored, very put together cuz like mm-hmm. she has to be for PR purposes, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And he's just like kind of stinky. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, it's not really, it's it, this is unfounded. You know, this doesn't. No, I mean, we. It's, it's I've no like the no purpose for this. I just for, for some we, reason we Timothy just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know. He's just like I I don't I can't I don't you know I don't know. He just gives me the, the heebie-jeebies a little bit. I totally agree. For whatever reason, nothing against him. I just I don't know why. Okay, then that's okay. I'm. Maybe if he wants to come on the pod and clear the air about his stink. I'll talk to him for sure. We don't know about you, Timothy. And also, what's he going to do with all that junk? I, it, all that junk inside her trunk. Yeah. Hey, Kylie's? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, too. Kylie just seems like a lot of woman for him, you know? Is that fair? She is 
woman. She's too hot, I personally think. I think she's got, she's too hot. Okay, I'm going to say it. I know that's like, you don't want me to say that, people, but I think she's, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like you can't keep up with her. So, are we allowed to say What's the phrase? I feel like we're unfair to him. I feel like odorless until proven stinky. And I think, you know what I mean? (laughs) That was crazy. (laughs) Odorless until proven stinky. Yeah. And I feel like we're kind of jumping to conclusions on him. You're right. And I'm sure he can't. No, we did hear. There was a story that we've heard from someone that spoke to him. I feel like maybe they rubbed him the wrong way or. They rubbed them. They rubbed, yeah, yeah. And so maybe. Figuratively. He rubbed them the wrong way. Yes, figuratively. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's why the uh, impression has been soured. But um, I I think so, too. I think about that story, too. And I'm like. But even before that, I feel like. And maybe not. I don't know. It's just like he's one of those like, like, he's like, just like a classic actor. Yeah, he always feel he always he always feels like he's doing something. So true. That is so true. Dune, that movie sucks. Sucked ass. ass. Don't do that right now. He does this thing where he mimics me and he says what I'm saying as I'm saying it, and it it makes me. Just burst into a fit of laughter every single time. It's a guaranteed laugh. It is. And your dance move. Do you want to show them your dance move? No. Oh, my God. Circlers, That's we share. For us. At, with As circlers, we share things with each other. That's fine. You can. That's That one's for us, though. Okay, fine. Now, I don't know about Timothy, but I'm I'm down to be proven wrong. Like, I'd love to meet him and see. Yeah. I'd be like, Tim, good to meet you. <laughs> I knew it. You fucking stink, dude. <laughs> I I don't know. I feel like I I hey, wearing. He's like he's French. Oh. It's a natural deodorant. It doesn't work, dude. You need the chemicals. It's the only thing that fights the BO. Oh my god. I didn't know you're so passionate about natural deodorant. <laughs> it just never worked for me. I and it's it never gives me rashes too. Me too. But I just found this one that actually works. Oh, is this going to be a sponsor? Are we? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. It does work, though. What's it called? Would have been a great place to segue into a sponsor. I know, but they don't sponsor me, so I can't say it. But it's in my vlogs, so you can, you can check it out there. Do you want to do the journal questions? Are you over this? No, I'm not over it. I just I see those over there taunting. There's one more thing I want to talk about. Okay. Francesca Stugat. Okay. <laughs> Have you guys seen these TikToks of this girl? I actually found out that her name is Kelsey, which like I'm going to pat myself on the back for all the Kelsey's out there. Her friend records her doing these prank calls and she gets into character as someone named Francesca Stugat. And she basically calls like boys. I don't even want to say men. She calls these guys and she basically like gaslights them into thinking that they met her at a bar and it is so entertaining. She's like, hi, it's me, Francesca Stugat. (laughs) And I think it's so fucking funny. And I showed Cody and I was like, you need to learn who Francesca Stugat is. And I've seen people comment like they want to make, like they want her to make like a Francesca Stugat Instagram and stuff. And I really think that she should. Isn't Stugat something your dad always says? It's like an Italian, like, like a cuss word. Oh, like Stugatz. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like what you call someone. It's not my dad. It's my grandma who said it a lot. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she, and she nails it in like, it's not overly flirty, but she's really good at kind of being the type of guy that a guy would like want to talk to. Type of girl. Sorry. Like she's very like, oh, like I don't even know how to describe it, but it's just so, it's just so funny. Like, the first like 20 seconds of this video is her being like, it's Francesca Stugatz. And he's like, who? And she's like, we met at the bar last weekend. And clearly she knows something about, I think someone like tells them about the guy, maybe like another girl had met him or something. And so she knows like what to say. She's like this bar at this time. And he's like, you can tell he's thinking I was there. Yeah, for sure. So maybe I did meet this girl. And then he goes, 
okay, what's up? <laughs> like, yeah, he starts like, to play into it. And then there's, like, one where he's like, listen, I didn't want to say it at the beginning, but I definitely do remember you. And he's like, I was just I was just playing a little stupid, trying to be coy or something like that. <laughs> it's so cringe. It's like, and she's like, I knew it. Like, <laughs> and it's just, like, so, like, she just fucking gets these guys to, like, look so stupid. And it's, like, it's so funny. Sorry, I keep grabbing the mic from you, but. Uh, it's okay. And then she'll be like, well, I'm coming back in a couple weeks to visit my friend. Maybe we should see each other again. And he's like, maybe we should. (laughs) It's like so brilliant. If you have not watched, I don't know what the girl's name is who, because it's her friend who posts these videos, but just look up like Francesca Stugat on TikTok. And like, it's so funny. I want to get her to call like, like one of our friends. Should we? Like Devin. (laughs) I don't think that would go over well. I also think he listens to this, so. I think, but I also think, like, it, like, you, it has to be, like, a college-age dude. Any guy over 30 is going to be like, I didn't fucking, well, no. <laughs> what? I, no, I didn't. What are you talking about? Who is this? Is a spam. That's true. You know? I do forget that we're, like, old now, but maybe we could get Samantha. We have, our friends have a little sister who's in college, and maybe, maybe we could do it to one of her friends. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. If anyone, if any circlers want to get Francesca Stugat to call someone and then send it in the Geneva, please do. Also, if you haven't joined the Geneva, you guys, like seriously, this thing has been popping off lately and it is just so fun. The link for it is in the highlights of the at circle time pod Instagram. And it really is so fun. Everybody's talking about where they're from and sending pictures of their animals. And then there's like story time and their people are getting advice and talking about books and just chatting and all of that. And it like, I just love it so much. So go to at circle time pod, the Instagram highlights and the link is there. But anywho, it's our journal o'clock. And I was going to do a story time with you. I was going to listen to a voicemail. We could give someone advice, but I think we'll just go straight to journal time. Because I brought a lot of journal questions today because Cody's never done journal time before because we didn't do it when he was a guest before. So here we go. Cody, you can choose any of these questions. Okay. He's opening up his journal question. Give an idea for a new invention. Oh, my God. Oh, I didn't realize I'd be put on the spot like this. I have to be creative. I thought these were journal questions. Like, what's one good thing that happened? What are you grateful for? Invention. What's an invention? Okay. Yep. You do one first, I'll think. Okay. When I was a kid, I had an inventions folder and I would make up things that I wanted to invent. And one of them was this thing to help you grow, to get you to be as tall as you possibly could be. So you would step and I made a prototype. You step on these two like shoes and then it, like it rises and it raises you up and it makes you taller. And I so and I put a bunch of like paper like in like a zigzag so it like lifted. And I, it was called the well it didn't have a name but we'll call it now the height height lifter two thousand. Wait, so you kind of invented the Kanzuri Kanzuri cloud lifter shoes that we wore at our bachelor party. You just shoes that make you taller. Yes. You invented platform shoes. Oh my god. That's crazy. No wonder I like them so much. Seriously. Do I have an invention, 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 invention? Okay, if I were to invent anything and then poof. And then... You can choose another. And then, no, no, no. Oh, I feel like I should have a good answer to that. <clears throat> All right. Fine. Okay. Hold on. It's... Okay. 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 It's... When you're DJing. And then someone does the CO2 can of... It's that, but it's beer. Whoa. That would be crazy and kind of fun unless you have a gluten intolerance. Yeah, true. Yeah. So we have we just have to have people fill out waivers before if they're gluten free, then we can spray like white claw or something. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Here. That's a good I that's a good invention, Cody. He's going for all the blues. Okay, talk about a time when you learned a lesson. Well, in 2012, I learned that people at 
shooters don't want to hear dubstep. <laughs> and that's a lesson I will I will take with me to my grave. Wow, that's a big one. Learned a lesson, a, les- a lesson. Well, I think that, you know, it's you, one of the things, I think actually what it, maybe an important thing that I know, but I keep relearning it. Is it's you have to be scared. It's good to be scared. Okay. There we go. Keep good. Get into that. We said this on my episode, but you always should feel like you're biting off a little bit more than you can chew. Because how are you? How else are you going to learn to chew more food? Right. You you don't have to joke. Be vulnerable. I'm not joking. Let it out. That's a serious. That's a serious thing. I really was like, I've no. I know I'm making them all of these things DJ related and I'm sorry that's really douchey but well, like in my life now circlers well no that's just the it's just people tend to be like okay well I've learned everything I can learn and this is my this is I work this job now and that's who I am right and I'm I'm too old to do anything else but it's like it's like no you can learning curves aren't as aren't as uh, intimidating as they may seem they're not like as black and white as they may seem too. like. There's yeah. Just because you're doing something and it's what you think you should be doing and you've learned a lot about it and whatnot. If you want to learn about something else, you can like, there's not, they're not, it's not like linear, Like, you go on whatever path you want. If someone like was, was able to illustrate your potential somehow and you saw what your potential actually was, you'd be fucking floored at what it actually is. That, that is really beautiful. Cody. Seriously, that's a really, really great way to put it. That like helped me just now. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I truly believe that. And remember that, circlers. The world is your oyster. Yeah. And you reach that by being scared, constantly scaring yourself at what you're trying to achieve and the things you're trying to do. And sometimes you're going to make a fool of yourself, but that's just what it takes. It's worth it. It's worth it. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to pink this time. Okay, talk about a time you tried something for the first time. Well, we kind of talked about that at the beginning. At the beginning? Well, we talked about your first Bruce Springsteen concert and your first time DJing in Vegas. Yeah, that's true, actually. But first, I did try going to a Bruce Springsteen concert for the first time. Talk about, talk, think about a different one. Is there another time? When I tried something for the first time, getting married. Ooh, first and only, hopefully. Yes. Renew our vows. Mm-hmm. That's so. It's not really getting married again, is it? But I mean, that was a big first. That was a great first. Though. That's a lot of firsts in one. Yeah. First proposal. First writing vows. First getting married. I don't. I don't like that you're referring to all of these as your first. Well, I mean, I think when 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 it says what's something you tried for the first time, it's a new experience. I was These were all- more along the lines of like when I tried like cheat like fondue. Oh, okay. That was your first time trying fondue. Like this wasn't your first time. I mean, th- that insinuates that there's gonna be a second time that you get married. I don't think it does at all. You can do things for the first time once, but I'm just saying like there's things in life like getting your wisdom teeth removed. It's like I know that's gonna. I know that's. I mean, it's happened to me. But like before it happened, it's like I know it's probably gonna happen. And I'm going to have to experience this for the first time and hopefully the last time. I have all my wisdom teeth in. That's what I'm saying. So it just gets coming. No, they grew in straight. That's pretty sick. I know, isn't it? No. That's why you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> okay. okay. Go. No. Okay, whatever. Last journal time question for Cody. He went with a purple one. Because of my shorts. Because of his shorts. What's up? R- <laughs> Write a story from the point of view of a baby. We can just skip that one. <laughs> Why? It's funny. Do you want to do it? Write a story from the point of view of a baby. I got okay. It. Wait, Marshall. Hi, Hang it's on. me. Oh, okay. It's baby Burnett. It's baby Burnett here. I had a shitty sleep. So bad. Woke up in the middle of the night. Had to puke. Hate that. I can't sleep through the night without my parents bothering me. They come in to check on me all the time. And they complain like they can't fucking sleep. Leave me alone. 
Leave me alone then. You know? Yeah. I can puke in my crib. It's fine. And uh, now now I'm in this stupid baby, what's it called? Thing rocking me back and forth. My parents are too lazy to do it themselves. They put me in this machine. I love it though. I love it. So, in fact, I'm getting kind of sleepy. All right, I'll catch you next time. It's Burnett. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about Burnett as a baby. Why? Because his he has a really low voice, kind of scares me, and he's really negative. It's a girl, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of was picturing her as like Stewie, but not British. I was picturing Boss Baby. <laughs> how does how does Boss Baby sound? Like a grown up. Isn't it like the voice of Paul Blart or something? Isn't it like Alec Baldwin? Is it? Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, oh, it is Alec Baldwin. You sounded kind of like him. Hi, Spin. <laughs> Sorry, that was me talking like Hilaria. I take the kids to school and I bring them back. That's what she does. She lies about what she sounds like. Do you know what I'm talking about, though? Yeah, she's not Spanish, right? No. Like at all? No. Anyway, we can get into that another time, but okay, well. What's the word for um... cucumber? <laughs> How you say cucumber. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Well, Cody, thank you so much for joining the circle today. We loved having you on and we really appreciate it. And all you circlers out there, I love you and keep circling, honestly. And I'll talk to you in the Geneva or on Instagram or write a review and leave five stars. And... That's that. And I'll talk to you next time. Do you have anything to say? No, (laughs) literally no. That was, that was so scary. (laughs) That was fucking insane of you. I thought you were gonna be like, love you guys. Thank you. YOLO. (laughs) (laughs) Say bye to the circlers. Bye guys. Love you. Love you. Bye. See you next time. Please note that this episode may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products and services. Individuals on the show may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to in this episode.